And I have a nice and exciting guest by the name of Mr. Rondell Clay. And he's the son of the jazz legend, man. And uh, uh, one night I was in a club, man, and uh, I went out up there and I saw this little slender guy up there playing his horns, man. And I kept looking at him. I said, man, look at this dude, man. Just look at him, man. And he can say, hey, what's up, man? You come in regular? I said, yeah, I'll be in a pretty regular, man. Yeah. And he, uh, he kind of had a little problem with his teeth, man. And his mouth, man, was, you know, his little tooth was moving around on his mouthpiece. And I looked around. <laughs> and then he started playing. I heard that tone. I said, man, I want to heard that somewhere, man. He said, yeah, my name Clay, man. Clay. I thought, oh, man. And it was a pleasure, man, playing with him, man, at night, man. Then a couple more years, man, you, him, and, he, and your mom, man, hired me to take some pictures for him. And I believe that was on his, his campaign. He had started on that final album he had done. And I took some pictures for him and everything, man. Your mom know me too, man, you know. And okay. It was a very exciting, you know, pleasure in order to meet him. So okay. today I'm going to honor you, man, and we're going to reminisce a little bit, man. We're going to talk a little bit how... And I would think it would be, you might have a, a artist probably came over your house and talked to you, man. And when you were a little kid, man, you knew all of them. So oh, I'm yeah. going to do a little talking now, Randall. Uh, okay. now, I need to know, uh, where were you born at and uh, <laughs> your school and all that like that? Okay. Yeah, I grew up in the Oak Cliff, man. I was born at Parkland Hospital, as, as a lot of Dallasites were born yeah, uh, mm -hmm. back in 65. Uh, uh, you know, my mom and my dad, they met, I think, in 62, and I, I came along in 65. Uh, I grew up in Oak Cliff, South Oak Cliff, South Oak Cliff Bear, class in 1983. Mm -hmm. uh, had a great time growing up in Oak Cliff, man. You know, people probably think that's crazy now, but, man, Oak Cliff was a nice area back then. Yeah, I know. Real nice, real nice place to live, you know, great, uh, great neighbors, you know. A lot of role models in the neighborhood, a lot of role models on the street, you know. You know, men got up and went to work, you know, houses had dads in the homes, you know. It was, it was a real nice area. It was a real nice place to grow up. Uh, like I said, I came out of uh, high school out of South Oak Cliff in 83, and I ended up going to Prairie View, A&M, mm -hmm. which is my alma mater. Went down there, studied engineering, came out of there in 88. And uh, it's kind of interesting story. Uh, around about that time, anybody from Dallas and, you know, was anywhere, you know, kind of moving around a little bit, you know, that was uh, the 80s, the late 80s was an interesting time, man, you know, it was, you know, Dallas was a hotbed for, you know, crack was, was just devastating Oak Cliff. Yeah. With yeah. Some of the other things going on. Yeah. So uh, when I got out of school, out of Prairie View in 88, you know, I had opportunity to come to Florida, work in the space program. Oh, I, wasn't, oh, yeah, okay. I wasn't coming, you know, I was like, I'm, I'm staying in Dallas, man, find, you know, find me something out here. And I remember uh, the old man had got off from work that day. He's, he was working at Handelman's uh, record warehouse over there, you know, pulling orders at a warehouse. Yeah, I remember that part of his life. That. He told me yeah. when he left New York and he had to come back home. Yeah, had to come back home, get a regular gig, you know, nine mm -hmm. to five like everybody else. Uh -huh. But uh, he had got on from work that evening, you know, and, and I had been on an interview out there, uh, out here in Florida where I am now. And uh, so I told him how much money they were paying. He was sitting there eating. He didn't pay that much. He didn't pay that much attention to us. But uh, so I, I ran it by him, you know, you know how you do as a young man, you know, you yeah. don't really act like you're asking for advice, but you're really looking for some guidance and some wisdom. Yeah. So, uh, Oh man, he just kind of looked at me, kept on eating, and I, I went on back in my room. So he came back there a little while later. He said, hey, look here, Mose. He said, that's some good bread they paying down there in Florida. He said, you're going to get your shit and you're going to go to Florida. I said, uh, okay, all right. He said, me, me and your mama done done all we can do for you here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, so, so so that was that was sometimes that's the best thing to do, man. Okay. That, 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 uh, that's so I, I, I'm what I'm saying like that now. I know like music, man, is a big important to everybody's life. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an important of my life. You know, I had one period that I was trying to force horns inside my my son's hands. I got three kids. And my yeah. dad played the trumpet too, man. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And so 
my thing, I want to kind of like pass the torch to my son. But yeah. out of out of the three kids, I never got a, uh, they started out playing and they put it down for athletics. Yeah. So was there any time in your life your dad basically say, man, I want you to play the sax, man. Or I want you to learn music, <laughs> anything like that. You know, he, he never really forced it on us. You know, like I said, I, I, I came home one day, you know, in elementary school, you know, and I, you know, when they used to get a little, you know, come out with the brochures and they have like the band class and stuff. And yeah. I came home, my little brochure, you know, I, I saw the sax, I used to see him play it. And I was like, man, no way in hell I can learn all of the notes and all that stuff and how to move your fingers. I said, but this trumpet looked like something I could do. It's only three, three valves on it. I can figure that out. Oh, you ready? So, no, no, I, I, that's what I said. That's what oh, I, yeah, I was yeah, going okay. with. All right, all right. I figured that was going to be the easier, easier instrument to play, yeah. but I wanted to play a horn, right? So he was like, okay, cool, man. All right, cool. He said, tell you what. He said, we'll get you started on some piano lessons. And I was like, no, no, no. I want, I want this trumpet right here, you know, on the paper. I want this, I want this right here. He said, yeah, yeah, I hear you. He said, but, but you got to learn how to read music first. And so we're going to get you started on some piano lessons. Yeah. I said, no, no, Dad, you, you didn't hear what I said. I, I want to play this. He said, no, I heard you, and you don't hear what I'm telling you. Yeah. Any son of mine, a kid of mine that's going to play instrument going to know how to read music. Got to learn how to play the music. Got to learn how to read. read. So he was like, he said, you go through, you stick with, with learning how to read this music, you know, and put some time in on this piano. He said, then, then we'll get you an ax. He said, other than that, we're not getting one. And so that was pretty much the last of that conversation. I, I went to a couple of lessons. I didn't like it. So I went back to playing football, basketball, and soccer. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. yeah. But he always made sure, you know, like I said, he, he never really forced, you know, forced me to do it. You know, I had the interest, but then again, you know, he was somewhat of a perfectionist when it came to music. You know, he didn't bull jive around when it came to yeah. music. Yeah. You know, he, he was, he, he felt like he, he was one of the top in his class of, of, of tenor sax, Texas tenor sax players. Texas tenor. And so he, he's, he was like, hey, you're going to do it. You're going to do it right. He said, I don't care what you do in life. You're going to do it right. So yeah. that oh, was kind of his philosophy. He played flutist too. He played, he played a mean flute, man. Yeah, I, and a lot of people say he was a better flute player than he was a sax player, but yeah, uh, I, yeah. I think that flute went to the pawn shop one time and never made it back. And I think <laughs> <he didn't laughs> it. Say, man. Say, let me tell you, uh, around now, I want you to you know, tell me some stories, man. You know, yeah. I I would imagine what it's like, man, to have a red garland to come over or. or uh, uh, on that Coleman to come by your house one day, man, and sit up, man, and look at you and say, man, what you do? You know what I'm well, saying? Well, well, I tell you, uh, Red Gall, and I tell you, he was probably the most, one of the most interesting guys that, that I had ever met. And I was fairly young when, uh, when, when I used to be around him, but he used to live over in South Dallas, man, over in a little old apartment. I mean, little old rag, little old apartment building over there, know. man. Yeah. And my dad, you know, from time to when he would be in town, like I said, my dad was on the road with Ray Charles up until I was probably seventh grade before he before he came in off the road. Yeah. So he only really came home, you know, a couple of times a year, you know, maybe maybe a couple of times a year around Christmas time. And they might have got two, maybe three weeks off in the summertime. And that was it. Rest of the time they were traveling. But uh, uh, I remember several times we would go by and go see uh, Mr. Garland over there, Red Garland. And, uh, you know, he was just this kind of, he was an older guy then, you know, he's kind of, you know, light-skinned dude with this slick yeah. hair, you know, pulled yeah, back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, And he always, when we went by his apartment, right, he lived, like I said, we go in there, and I was like, man, you know, I'm looking around, because I had never really been anywhere. Where, I mean, it was a run-down little spot over there, man. Yeah. And uh, we go inside, and he had this big old dog, always was in there, man, and dog with crap all over the floor. He just put newspaper over it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it, you can imagine how it smelled in there. And I'm a little kid, you know. And him and my dad would get in there and they sit, man. And, you know, he always had a little something to drink. And my dad would take something to drink. Yeah, yeah. And they sit over there, man. And he just sit on the side of the bed with, like, a white beater T-shirt on and, and some pants, man. And, and he smoked cigarette and they drink and they laugh and talk, you know, about music and stuff, man. Yeah. And, and that, that's that's probably the only real. And then every once in a while, uh, I would get a chance to go to the different. I believe it was the uh, Arandas. 
Rams was, Club, yeah. That's yeah. Up there yeah. Every once in a while, I would, I, you know, I wouldn't have anybody to babysit me on, on like some of them Sunday sessions. Yeah. And uh, I had to put my Sunday suit on, and uh, I oh, go sit man. in one of the little booths in the back, yeah. you know, and, and the waitress would bring me a sprite and some chips or something, you know, and I sit back there and listen to the music. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, well, I met him, man. I met him up there. I met I met him up there at the Randis one night, and uh, I think Fathead was up there, and Marshall yeah. I was up there, and all them guys yeah. up there, man. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the things I had read in the uh, in the on the internet that uh, between him and Fathead, they pulled a trick on Ray Charles one time, and uh. They trying to trade his spots between each other, man. They could play so much celebrity between each other. Uh, people couldn't realize who was playing at that time. <laughs> and one night they even fooled Ray Charles, man. And so for somebody play note for note, for lick for uh, lick, and fool a blind, man. He had to be a hell of a man, man, and playing the playing style, man, because you know, Fathead yeah. wasn't no slouch himself, man. You know. Oh no, no, Fathead was 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 tight work, man. Fathead was tight work, and, and yeah. Fathead, like you said, talking about people in and out of the house all the time, man. You know, I, I grew up with like Fathead's kids and his and his, his first wife Esther Ray, man. They grew up right right down the street in Oak Cliff. No Dino. And Dino. uh, yeah. yeah, and man, I I mean, they, they were just like just yeah. regular folks, man. You know, and and it, and it was funny because when you're know, growing up and you seeing these folks, you don't really think much about it. But then when you got a little bit older and you got to understand, hey man, these guys are some tops in, in what they do, you know, in this in the jazz industry. Man, musical legends. I, I yeah. got one something to tell you about uh Miles Davis, man, was really getting ready to do this all blue CD a rucker uh -huh. back in the day. They call it a rucker. And yeah. one time he went out, he was looking for uh red, he couldn't find red, so he replaced him. And then uh -huh. your daddy was really set to play on that seat record instead of Coltrane. Yeah, I heard you know about that. Man? Yeah. He was the number one pick for Miles Davis, man. But you know, like, 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 you know, every told him, man, I got other commitments. I got to go back home, man. I can't, I can't get it, you know? That's what yeah. did it. You know, the yeah. rest is history, man. You know what I'm saying? So that was, yeah. I ought to tell you, man, and I, and I did a little read, man, how he was basically uh, the avant-garde style of playing between him and Arnett Coleman and Dewey Redmond and all these other guys. Man, he was an innovator, man. Really, yeah. he's a genius, man. Yeah, he, he was a up. genius, man. Right. Probably right. while you got it from, you a genius too. Well, well, I do all right. You know, I wouldn't say a genius, but 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 he he definitely was was a smart man and. Uh, I tell you, one of the highlights I used to like when he used to go on the road, because you remember back, back then, you know, if you remember, if you went to hotels and motels mm -hmm. and stuff, you always had a key with the with the with the name of the hotel, with the city on it, Holiday Inn, or Sheraton, yeah. or a Hilton, or wherever it was. That was one of the highlights. He's always keep a key, you know, and bring me back, you know, in his suitcase. You have all these keys. Mm -hmm. I used to have a big basket, man, just full of all these keys from all over the world. Mm. And uh, that, that used to be my little collection. I don't know what happened to it when I went off to college. I think my mama got rid of it. But uh, Yeah, and Ray Charles took him all around the world, man. But yeah, I used to be on collection. I actually, uh, you know, before I got uh, came on here, I went through some old papers I had. And man, unfortunately, none of them have the, the years on them. But uh, uh, I've got a, a bunch of itineraries, man, from Ray Charles' band from, uh, and these had to be back from the 60s, early 70s, from, uh, I mean, all over the world. It's got Jeff, uh, I forget the guy that was a band leader, Jeff, uh, Jeff something's name on here, but uh, uh, Jeff Brown, it was mm -hmm. when he was a, was a band leader. I've got uh, just a whole stack of, man, just, just kind of memorabilia from, uh, and it, it was like, man, these guys just playing like 20 nights in a row, different city every night. Man. They take a day or two off, and then I mean, I mean, it's just it's crazy, and and you can see how how doing that for a number of years, man, that wear on your body. Yeah, you know, on, on top of all, you know, that too, they did a lot of partying and hanging out and other things too. And after a while, I mean, that, that just I could see how that would just just wear you out over over a few years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you're the only child, huh? Well, I have a I have a sister. Uh, my my dad had a. Uh, a daughter before before he and my mom got together, and uh -huh. then uh, my mom had a son before he, he and my uh, she and my dad got together. 
So I'm I'm the common child. I'm the baby of the bunch. As, as the you baby say. of the bunch. Yeah. 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 See, I wondered, man. And, you know, I did a lot of surfing on the internet, and you know, that's one thing that this Facebook and uh, all this stuff is really doing. It's putting together a lot of lost time together. You know, yeah. I would probably never would have found you, man, unless one day I looked up and I said, "You know that guy somewhere, man." <laughs> Face look familiar, man. Then you say Randall Clay, and uh, I said, well, "He's kind of young. Oh, he had a son when he was." In the well, your dad was a young man when he died. I I, I think I yeah. look fifty nine years. That's a young man. Fifty nine, yeah, he's fifty nine, yeah. Young yeah. man, you know, and like you say, it was years, but he's fifty nine, yeah. yeah. And I put it like this, around, you know, a person when he's a chosen, he's a chosen person. You know, God gave him ability to yeah. do what he did in life to make yeah. a difference in a lot of more people's lives. Sometimes your time, you know, is you know is limited. You know, you know, and you, yeah. that's why sometimes you basically have to do what you can, do it, and go on, do be through with it. You know what I'm saying? What well, he did one was just doing. You know, here I am, an old man. I'm still trying to make a record, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and he was blessed to make one when he was 17 years old. You know what I'm saying? So. Well, it was interesting, man, you know, and, and you think about, you know, I was talking, you know, my dad, we used to talk a lot, you know, like he was telling me about when he first went to California. Mm. You, know, he, you know, yeah, went to uh, North Texas and, and then went to Houston Tillerson before that for a while. Yeah. He got a chance. He said, man, you know, I, I just decided I was leaving. You know, I was going to go out to L.A., you know. He said it was two spots to go back then, either New York or L.A. L.A., yeah. You know, so he chose L.A. He said he had an old raggedy car that he had hand painted with some with some purple paint. <laughs> He said he loaded it up with his little stuff and he rode on out to LA, you know, and, and, and got started out there. And he hooked up with like Billy Higgins uh, out there. And uh, I had a chance to meet Billy Higgins a couple of times. Real, real, real cool cat, man. You know, I just read about Billy Higgins a while ago, man. He said he made over 700 CDs, a record. He was the most recorded jazz drummer in history. And uh, Ron no. Carter, the most recorded bass player. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and but, uh, uh, most of it all started with the Blue Note. The yeah. Blue Note people, you know, they, they got them hooked up together and they basically were like the session players. They played on mostly everybody, man, you know. And shoot, man, it's it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of a sad thing that basically all that playing, man, and they should be billionaires, man, you know what I'm saying? And it's kind of strange the way the Rucker Company do, I, do our people now, and they did them bad back in the day, you know what I'm saying? Before we really know anything about royalty and money and stuff like that, you know, uh, even you, you should be getting some royalty money yourself, man, you know what I'm saying? Well, you would you would think, but, but you know, and that's the thing too, growing up, you know, you always thought, cause you know, oh man, my dad played for Ray Charles, and, you know, everybody thought we had a lot of money, which, yeah. you know, we didn't have no lot of money, you know, we had a, you know, like my dad said, B flat job, you know, working with Ray Charles, he said, you would thought it would have been glamorous to him. He said, hey, man, it's just like any other job. Like going you know, to a nine-to-five job. Every day. I get paid, you know, yeah. I, I come home. And, uh, and you know, my mom was an, is a nurse. You know, she's retired now. But uh, mm -hmm. but uh, so so it was like, man, but just still took both of those salaries, man, you know, to pay the bills around the house, make, make stuff go. Yeah. And, you know, the old man, he was, you know, he was kind of a free spirit, you know. You know, he just kind of was, it's easy going, you know. And uh, but Mama, you know, you know, she she's the one that was the glue of the family that kept everything pulled together. Yeah, she's you know, a nice and, lady, man. I met her too. Yeah, you know, when I met yeah. her, you know, uh, I think on that last CD record, man, I gave him some pictures, man. You know, we talking about that, and I never knew where the pictures was gonna go. And I think that's my picture on that record album, man. And okay. I ain't never say nothing about it, man. I just, you know, I do a lot of things, man, just for the. You know, just prosper or what? I, I don't want to get no yeah. credit for it, man. But I knew he was trying to make a comeback. Yeah. And and I was looking at the time. I said, well, I know it's a real hard thing to do, man. You know. And he said, I gotta go check a check a flight. That's what he told me that night. I gotta go to New York tonight. And I said, well, man, be careful, man. You know what I'm saying? That's probably the last time I saw him, man. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's, it's like, you know, and I, you know, I think back, you know, there's a lot of things I didn't understand as, as a kid and as a young man growing up about, you know, life. And, you know, life life is something else. The older you get, the more you understand about it. But uh, I remember, uh, you know, I was just sit, sitting there 
thinking about it one day. Well, well, sir, it's, it's been on my mind for several years, but how it had to be humbling. You know, you've been on the road with Ray Charles, what, 62 to about 75, 76, something like that. Mm -hmm. and that's your job. You know, you're traveling all over the world, you know, with one of the hottest, you know, bands in the, in the land. And then uh, it kind of got to a point where, you know, it's like, okay, I, I got family at home. I got, I got to go home and, you know, tend yeah. to my family. You know, this, you know, this is cold, but I got to go home. And then to go from that to a job, just like working in, in a warehouse, you know, like a, you know, nine to five, just working in the warehouse, somebody telling you about pulling all of this, that, and the other, yeah. you just come off the road, you know, working with Ray Charles, you know, for, for 10, 12, 14 years. Yeah. But you know that that's that's a testament of, of what you have to do for your family, you know. Yeah. In order like the weekend, they kind of they had that club called a recovery room. I think that's kind of yeah. that kept them together. That kept his, his mind together at the same time, you know. Yeah, yeah. He played a lot of he played a lot of different different gigs uh, during the uh, you know during that time. He always was somewhere playing on the weekend, uh -huh. and uh, uh, you no, know, he go out on you know different jam. We went to the Mount Fuji Jazz Festival, played over there. He played a number of different jazz festivals. And even when he, he was doing an album, you know, he'd have to, you know, go take vacation time off his job or work somewhere with them, you know, to be able to fly to LA and New York, you know, wherever it was that they were, they were doing the album, putting the album together, you know, and trying to work that out, you know, with your boss, you know, and, and it's, I was just like, man, that's just, it's just weird. A lot of people don't see that side of the business, you know, whereas, you know, yeah, you, you may be on some album covers, this, that, and the other, but, you know, for a lot of a lot of the musicians out there, man, it's a labor of love. It's not a lot a whole lot of money, not a lot of money in it, if you will. You know, not enough to uh, uh like I was watching one of one of your videos uh, uh a couple of days ago. One of the guys, you know, they've been together, been playing for over twenty his band twenty years. They said man, everybody got a nine to five. Yeah, you know, everybody got a nine to five job, man, because you know got a nine to five, yeah. Music is uh, it's mostly country, where else in the blues, man, or one of the others, man. And one, you got different neighborhoods, you got it real tight in it. You know, jazz is mostly prevalent in the white neighborhoods over here in North Dallas, man. Fire and Blitz, you know, return to flight, and they came to Prairie View, man, and recruited about, I think, about eight, eight engineers. Out. Well, they recruited, tried to recruit more than that, but it's only about eight of us crazy enough to come down here. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, because everybody wanted to stay in Dallas and Houston, you know, because, yeah. you know, it's happening in towns. Yeah. Came out here, man, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of laid back, you know, kind of, kind of rural a little bit, kind of, kind of slow. And, uh, but like I said, man, it was some pretty good money. I was like, hell, I ain't never seen, you know, never really been outside of Dallas or Houston before. So uh -huh. I go give it a shot for a couple of years. And, and, man, I came down here, man, and met some good people. And I enjoyed it. The job was paying pretty good money. So I said, hell, I, I stayed for a while. That was 32 years ago. Golly, man. Yeah, yeah. Woo. But, uh, but I, I tell you, uh, uh, like I said, I, I get back out to Dallas quite a bit, man. Like I said, my mom is still out there and all the rest of my yeah. family's out there. So yeah. so I really like, I like Dallas. I'm, I'm planning on retiring out there, Lord, say so, say the same right. uh, in, a, in a few years. Cause like yeah. I said, I pretty much put my time in. I'm kind of to a point, if I ain't got it by now, I'm probably not gonna get it, so. <laughs> well, let me ask you something. You got anything you want to try to contribute to the Smithsonian Union? Uh, in, uh, you know how they do. They give uh, horns or uh, flutes yeah. or something like that, man. Your dad, you want to, you know, put in the prosperity and for history? I know they probably don't ask you one day about some of them letters right there, man. Probably, you know, once you give it to them, it's not yours no more, though, man. Yeah, yeah. It's you know what? That, that, that may be something that, that that may be on the on the plate. You know, he still, you know, he used to, he used to play a Selma March 6. Uh huh. Yeah. That's, that's a pretty hot horn still, even. Hot right? horn, man. It worth a lot of money, too. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was talking to, you know, that's the next one I'm going to try to get. You know, uh, Fred Hubbard. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about it. I've heard of him yet. Dwayne, yeah. Dwayne is in Florida, too, man. And, and Dwayne had, a, he got both afraid of tone. He got the fugal horn and the trumpet, man. He just got it in the house. Oh, and yeah. I told him, man, I, you know, you know, maybe get one you can donate to history, man, one day, man. I know it's kind of hard pardon from him, but, you know, I was looking the other day and they got Dizzy's horn down now, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they probably got I, some of everything in there. But, I, I got a chance to meet him one time. Oh, you did? I did. Uh, I, it was, uh, I was down here in Florida, man. And I think I was in Miami. 
and it was a jazz festival down there. It was Billy Higgins, uh, Dizzy Gillespie, uh, I want to say Cedar Walton, but it was a uh, man. It, it was it was a smorgasbord of of folks down there. And I had told old man I was going, you know, about the concert. He was like, "Hey man, go back there." Uh, he said, "So when you get down there, man, go 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 talk to Billy, man. He 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 know you." And so I thought he was joking. I was like, "Man, I ain't gonna go back there and go mess with these guys." So, so they had a little break in in the uh, in the session there. So I went back there to uh to the where where the uh, where the trailers were. Went back there to the to the security guard. I said, "Hey man, uh, would you tell Mr. Billy Higgins that uh you know Randy Clay is out here, uh, James Clay's son." So uh, he said, "Oh okay, just wait right here." So I waited there for a while. Next thing I know, here comes this you know this scraggly you know salt and pepper beard guy mm -hmm. coming out of there with you know red hair. Yeah. And uh, he come out and then I had me and one of my buddies was with me. He said, "Randy, what's up, man?" Come on in, come, come on, come on. So I, I never met the guy, never seen the guy before in life. And he took us back there in the trailers, man. And so uh, went in and so uh, we were in the trailer, he was in there, uh, Mr. Gillespie, Dizzy Gillespie was in there and it was a couple other musicians there in the trailer. And man, we just sat, sat back there, had a drink, you know, talked with the guys, man. And, yeah. and uh, it was funny because, uh, you know, that, that musicianhood and that musicianship, it's like a fraternity. For you know, those yeah, guys that yeah. know each other, man, they, they really know each other. You know he each knew other. so much about me, and I had never, you know, I'd never met the guy before. He was like, "Yeah, man, your daddy told me you was down here, uh, uh, launching rockets or some kind of shit." I said, "Yeah, man." So we, you know, <laughs> space, yeah, we're in the space center, you know. He was like, "Man, they they really sending them rockets up there, you know?" He's, because he was like, "I don't believe that, man. They going nowhere, man." And uh, I said, yeah, man, we, we we sending them up. I said, no, we ain't going to the moon or nothing, but we going to the space station, you know. And yeah. so we sat back there and had a good laugh, man. He told a bunch of stories about how him and my dad met out in L.A. and all the fun they had. And and I, and I ran into uh, Mr. Higgins uh, several times over the years. I saw him a couple times at Montreal Jazz Festival because I used to travel around to the different jazz festivals and stuff. Yeah. You know, once I kind of got out, you know, got out and got a little money in my pocket. And that's what my old man told me about coming to Florida. He said, man, you, he said, you done experienced life with no money in your pocket. He said, you get down there, get that job, get some money in your pocket, you can do some things. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, Randy, we in well with all that music experience in you right now. I think you ought to try to you know, do a little bit of music, man, start promoting people, man. We need some good promoters, man, and dollars, man, and yeah. jazz, man, because it's kind of dying out right here. If it's not in the white areas, it's yeah. just not in the south side here. And then we got a couple of guys out here like uh uh I would say Keith Anderson and all these young guys and Shelly Carroll and stuff like that right there. But uh yeah. I would say it's kind of pushed in one spot. Yeah. Not accepted by the youngsters. You know, and, and I've been listening to a lot of music nowadays, and I was talking to a guy up north, he was using the Neo Soul kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, crossing these new forms of music together with the, you know, the old style, you know, stuff. It, it works for the time, but I'm kind of like a throwback, man. I like some of that new stuff, but I basically, I like the classical stuff. And I was talking to him, other, a person the other day, but talking about how would it be, and it brings in some repetition about you playing the same tune over and over again. You get bored. And you gotta kind of be reversal with what you're doing. It's one thing I like Miles and 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 Herbie. They change up. You never know what tune you're gonna hear when you hear a Herbie Hancock, man. He changes, man. Then they might want him to play something. No, you're not gonna do that tonight. I'm gonna do what I wanna do tonight. Yeah. You know, it should be like that. You should be versatile and doing things and switching up on stuff. Yeah. But so what I see, man, like, I, man, we need to, maybe that's what you retire to, man, try to go out in the music, man. You know, it's in your bloodline, man. It don't need to die out, man. What I'm trying to say. Don't let yeah. it die. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and you're right, man. And, and you know, my uh, old man, we used to have that conversation about how, uh, you no, know, man, we used to talk about a lot of stuff in, in, in music and, and how, you know, it, you know, jazz is probably the original uh form of music that was started in America, you know, in America, and, yeah. and it was started, you know, by blacks Slavery. Here, Slavery. here in America. Yeah. yeah. But and how and how over the years, you know, it's like, you know, the white folks, they just took to it, you know, and our, yeah. and our young folks, just like you said, yeah. it's hard, you know, even just our history. Our young folks don't know our history, period. 
And so they don't they don't see value in in the, in the old you know in the, in the standards in the straight ahead because that, that that's my style of music. I like the straight ahead. I'm I'm Coleman Hawkins, you know. I'm Cold Train, you know. Mm. I'm I'm old man, uh, fat head, you know. Rig man, you want to hear some good music? Sit around and you know have a good evening with with, with your woman. You put some red garland on, man. Yeah, it's, man. Yeah. I, that's what I discovered. <laughs> I never knew red garland had that many ruffles he had. Out, oh man. man, he got that, a lot too, of ruffles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he recorded but, real. But I, I tell you, man, you know, I, like I said, there's some of the musicians around Dallas. You, you, you remember Worm? Yeah, I remember Jerome. Yeah, <laughs> I remember his Jerome. Name. All I knew his name was Worm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, Roger Boyd, because I know you Roger know Boyd. Roger. And uh, remember Claude Johnson? Claude Johnson, yeah. Piano player, man. Claude was over to the house all the time, man. And, and I mean, I knew these guys, man, these cats since I was like, Probably five, six years old. Oh, My whole man. life, I knew these guys. Walter Wynn. Walter Wynn. Remember drama? Wynn, the drama. Yeah, he's a sculptor. And, and, yeah. and, and sculptor. Yeah, I remember mm -hmm. when he got commissioned to to sculpt that Martin Luther King, uh, Luther uh, King. Uh, statue over there yeah. at the Martin Luther King Center. But you know, he, man, he got a lot of portraits, man. That's off in the pawn shops, man. He he did a lot of painting too. Oh, Jared yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. of them, guy. Lot yeah, the man had a, had a funny story about him and Walter Wynn played a gig. And mm -hmm. It was a wedding. I think it might have been Stone, remember uh, Stone, a uh, bass player? Stone, uh, Jewish guy. I can't think his last okay. name. I think I know uh, him. But he's from Dallas. He, he, he uh, played, played upright bass. But uh, I think it might have been his wedding. They, they was playing his wedding, and, and, and uh, uh, Walter Wynn was on the drums, and the old man said, so I told him. Walter, man, don't, don't go over here, man. We just gonna go over and play this gig. Don't need no trouble. Just play the gig. Don't need none of your solos. Just play the gig. Because <laughs> <laughs> I guess Walter Wynn was known to go off on these, you know, these songs. Yeah, yeah. So okay. All and, right. Uh, so he said, the day was going good. And he said, I damn, he couldn't hold it. He had to go off on one of them solos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a man of his own destiny, man. For real, man. I met him one night, too. and. Yeah. I really find out how talented he was, man, in music and and uh, artistry. You know, yeah. he's an amazing sculptor and artist. You I know, know and and, uh, yeah. and I tell you, man, he come by the house, and I used to sketch a lot when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And man, he come by, man, he give me pointers because the hardest thing from from painting, he said, he said, it's hands and eyes. Hands you know, it's like I'm always this man working on this hand. And when he come by, he said, let me see your sketchbook. Let me see your sketchbook. And the dude would stop, man. He looked through my sketchbook. He said, man, that's pretty good. You, you're doing pretty good. And he showed yeah. me little corners and stuff. But that was one of the things about, about those guys, man. They, they, you know, all of them, they knew what you were into, what you liked, what you did, you know, if you were playing sports, you know, what, what kind of how you was doing in school, I always encouraged you. That was one of the things that I really got a uh, uh, love and affection from a lot of all of my dad's friends that came by. Most of them friends were musicians. And man, they were just, I mean, they were just down to earth people, man. Yeah. You know, a lot of their kids and families and stuff, you know, we knew each other. And it was just like I said, it was like a fraternity of musicians. Mm -hmm. That was cool. That's what you I had a chance too, to right? meet. Uh, you make a sci fi, huh? I know yes, about sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, make a sci fi right? to the day I die. To the day you die. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, I had a chance, uh, and I don't know if you, if you've ever been aware of it, but you know we missed doing it this year. But over in uh, Fort Worth, every year right around September, they do mm -hmm. a uh, tribute to the old man. Uh, uh, you no, know, Dwayne Durrett, drum. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Dwayne and Roger. Yeah, Ball. I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Kelly, Kelly uh, Durbin, and uh, Kelly Durbin. Honey, Kelly. Honey Case, piano you know player. they had a guy on. His name is Zola. Zola, you know him? White guy. He died a couple of days ago. Yeah, Dave Zola. You ever heard yeah, Dave Zola? Tribute over there, man. Yeah, keyboard player. No, he died a couple of days ago too. So it's it's getting kind of slim in the in the musicians around there now. A couple of days ago, they had one called Lucky Peterson. Lucky Peterson died a couple of days ago. I saw that, man. Yeah, I, I saw yeah. Lucky Peterson. He's always at jazz festivals and, and different mm -hmm. things. In fact, I was at like, one time. I was out there in Dallas, out at the Equestrian Park. Out there, he was yeah. out there. Uh, yeah, they they had did a little uh, jazz festival, concert festival out there about three or four years ago. So, uh, as we wind up, uh, Randy, um. um 
What are some of the plans you got for the future? Now, I know we've been talking about a lot about you trying to, uh, I think, and I'm kind of suggesting the thing, but maybe you should try to start a legacy for your, your father, man, because he you know, I'm real, I'm real, uh, you know, highly on, on him. He, he motivated me a lot, man, because uh, like I'm saying, that night I met him, man, I was going to try to give up on music, man. And I was going through a bad marriage, man. My wife, man, she really beat my horn up that night when I went out and played that night. <laughs> she didn't want me to go out, man. So it's a lot of things with involved in, man, when you involved with music, except you be sitting up on the bandstand playing, man. It's a lot yeah. of stuff you go through, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, uh, I look forward for you to do something pretty soon, and I'll try to keep in touch with you, Mr. Mr. Clay, you know. And it's okay. been an exciting interview today, and uh, uh, maybe again we can come back again. We have a part two when I dig up some more facts and stuff. And uh, okay, you know, it's a cycle well, talk to you, Dan. So uh, well, I I'll really you. appreciate you uh, uh, honoring uh, me today, interviewing you. Thank you. Well, I, I appreciate you, man, keeping the legacy of, of, of my dad going, man. Like I said, uh, you know, he 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 died at a, at a fairly young age. It's twenty five years ago, as a matter of fact. Yeah, it was yeah. it was uh, nineteen ninety five. That's 25 years ago. But uh, I appreciate you, man. Like I said, it took us a while to get together, and I'm glad we finally had a chance to get together. Matter of fact, one next next time I'm out there, when this COVID get, get passed. Yeah, when this COVID's out of the way. That's around. another thing, man. I've been in hibernation. I've been hiding, man. I don't. I went somewhere all the night, man, and I was standing back, man. I had my mask on. I was standing back. I yeah. stayed up there for a while. I left. They were too yeah. wild, man. The people, man, they walking around. It's crazy, man. They just don't respect it, man, you know, which yeah. is for real. Yeah, I, I actually got it back in June, man, and, I, and I'm just now starting to get back feeling like my old self. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah like I said, it, it ain't no joke. You know, people, mm -hmm. they taking it lightly. And uh, but uh, and I tell you, and I'm looking around at it, it is dispro disproportionately affecting black folks. Nice. Man. Cause yeah. I, I got guys I work. I've been working from home since March. Oh, I got you in the, Florida. They say Florida yeah. was heavy heated by. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's it's it's, it's a hot spot here. We can, oh, we got to launch tomorrow. Expecting almost half a million people over here for this space. Oh expo. man, that's right. That's right. The space stuff is starting yeah. back up again. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I used to be like I kind of be high on astronauts. I used to know all the astronauts around. Gus Grissom and all of them, man. I had my little models and stuff and yeah, yeah. him and I and all that stuff. And, and all of a sudden yeah. I said, man, it ain't gonna do nothing. And then they, they, now they bring it back up again, man, right? you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. We, we got, uh, we, we finally, U.S. finally putting humans uh, back in space. We hadn't done it for almost 10 years from, yeah. from U.S. song. Yeah. And so, so we back to, this will be the second one in, in, in about the last nine or 10 years. So. Yeah. So it's pretty exciting time, man. You know, I, coming from South Oak Cliff, man, I never thought that I would be, you know, working on the shuttle, working on the shuttle program. I mean, in and out of the shuttles. I was a system engineer, man. I I, I worked on just like you go work on a car. You know, that's what oh, I did. Oh. You no, know, I, I I worked. Oh, on let it. me ask you something too. You know, uh, you know about that book, man, about the three women's man. Is what that that's the first time I really heard about that? Basically, the three women were basically behind all this. Mathematical figures. Oh, yeah, hidden figures, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and I actually worked with with, with uh, one of my fraternity brothers down there. He's an older guy. He's a retired school teacher. Mm -hmm. He said in the summer times, because they had they had folks out here that, you know, were engineers, quote, unquote. Now, a black person couldn't get a job as an engineer, but they'd hire you to go crunch yeah. all the numbers. The, the they come out, 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 out of your mind. Yeah, yeah, you know, they, they had with the slide rules and go crunch yeah. all the numbers. And he said he used to go out there and, and, and work out there uh, in the summer times and crunching numbers for the engineers. He said they'd be over engineering, under engineering, you know, stress loads on beams and, and structural uh, uh, layouts and stuff. He mm -hmm. said, man, they didn't know what the hell they was doing out there. They, they was engineering trial and error. And then I come out there, you know, and crunch the numbers and say, hey, this is, this is undersized, this is oversized. He said they were just hiring guys that, you know, you know, that's how yeah, it was. Yeah, that same thing been going on ever since the slavery day when we was inventing stuff for them and never got credit oh. for it. You know what I'm saying? 
But but I tell you, you know, one thing about the old man, you know, we talk about my dad, you know, he always pushed the education. You know, uh, it, you know, it was it was no, now he let you get away with a bunch of stuff, but you weren't finna bring no C's and no D's in that house. I don't give a damn. Mm -hmm. That was not gonna happen. Cause he was a smart guy himself. He had to sit down with you and show you how to do something. And I remember one time he sat down with me, he said, I know damn well if I can sit here and do this and I ain't done it in so many years, you can figure it out sitting in a damn classroom all day, every day. Mm -hmm. So, so, but I, I think we missing that, man. Right now, you know, you look at the family structure, like I was saying, when I grew up, man, you know, you, you know, you, you wanted to succeed because you had people that you didn't want to let down. Motivates. The kids now, they, they don't give a damn about letting the parents down, letting the grandparents down. It, it, it don't matter to them. When I was growing up, it mattered. You know, you wanted to succeed because people are looking for you to succeed. Yeah. We got to get back to that as, as a community. As a community, as a group of get people, back to that. black people. Yeah. Got to get back to it. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you for being a guest today, Mr. Clay. All right. Right now, we got the son of the legendary, the legendary flutist, saxophonist, Mr. James Earl Clay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Nine. Nice All talking right. to you today, Randy. All right, brother. Take care now. All right. All right.